Teeth are the only exposed bones in the body. And just as if a bone breaks, it'll heal, teeth can heal. Holistic Dental is a book written by Nadine Artemis. And Nadine Artemis, she presents some fascinating things. She looks pretty much at what I've looked at here, but she goes a little bit further with the teeth, which are the only exposed bone in our body, and they should not be deteriorating. And if they do have a little decay, they have the ability to heal themselves, as every other body tissue does. So why aren't they healing? Maybe they haven't been given the right times, or they have not been given the right conditions. And she calls these two superfluids. So what are your two superfluids? And these two superfluids are constantly bathing the teeth and nourishing the teeth. One is the internal. So the internal, the internal fluid would be your blood and your lymph. And remember what the lymph does, it sweeps away waste from the tissues. And remember what the blood does, it comes along with the nutrition, it comes along with the oxygen, it comes along with the water, the white blood cells. So this internal fluid is bathing from the inside. And your external fluid is your saliva. Now both the internal fluid and the external fluid their quality is totally dependent on fresh air, sunshine, not taking anything in that will harm it, going to bed early, exercising every day, having a nourishing diet, having food that has the quality, the ingredients to build a healthy body, drinking adequate water. If you don't drink adequate water, that saliva does not have the ability to bathe, soothe, nourish and heal. And also trust in divine power. Why trust in divine power? Trust in divine power takes into consideration stress takes into consideration the spiritual, emotional and mental aspects of disease. Stress inhibits healing. Stress, worry, anxiety interrupts with all body processes and I think that's not a surprise to anyone. So we need to be be sure that our internal and external fluids are of the top quality to allow our teeth to heal. But something else this is causing teeth to deteriorate and that is food caught between the teeth. As one dentist said, only floss the teeth that you want to keep. <laughs> and I'm going to take your minds way, way back to another lecture where I talk about the true cause of disease. And remember I talked about uh, whenever uh, damage happens, our own microorganisms can change into bacteria and become the cleanup team. Well, when food is caught between the teeth, it basically starts to rot. So what happens then is what causes it to rot is in that moist environment, you've got so many microbes in your mouth, they're coming along to clean it up. And as the bacteria and the yeast start to break down that food between the teeth, they give off a waste. And that waste has the ability to start eating away at the enamel on the teeth. So make sure after every meal you rinse your mouth. Rinse your mouth very well. You can rinse it with seawater. You can rinse it with a mixture of sodium bicarbonate water and floss those teeth. <laughs> Keep them clean. Wow, won't we save a fortune not having to go to the dentist because you're keeping your teeth clean especially before you go to sleep at night because by morning, wow, those microorganisms have had a party in there and they've been able to uh, have a lot of food in between those teeth and they also have the ability to damage those, the, the, den the dentine that covers the teeth. So very important to rinse, very important to floss, in fact, the, both of these are even more important than cleaning with a toothbrush, but also oil pull. What's oil pulling? So oil pulling is using coconut oil, it's putting the oil in your mouth and it's swishing. 
swish, swish. You might swish for 10, rest for 10, swish for 10 seconds, rest for 10 seconds. It's called oil pulling because it can pull, pull waste out of the tongue, it can pull waste out of the glands under the tongue, it can pull waste out of the blood vessels under the tongue and then you release that oil out on the grass. Don't release it down the plug hole or you'll plug up your plumbing <laughs> and take some water with you and rinse again and release that out. So if, and I'm speaking about dental health here because teeth are part of the bones. Well they are bones so the same thing applies to the teeth as applies to all the bones in your body. Teeth should not be deteriorating and it's expensive business dentistry, isn't it? And remember, if you have a, a little bit of decay, then it's important that you rinse and floss after every meal, that you oil pull maybe a couple of times a day. Just be mindful that keeping that mouth clean will prevent tooth decay and also encourage tooth healing. But the healing of the tooth comes from the superfluids, the internal blood and lymph and the external fluid. And again, their quality is totally dependent on the food you're eating, how much you're drinking, going to bed early. So all of these things. Sugar is one of the worst because you know what sugar does? It just feeds all those little microns that are breaking down the things that are caught between your teeth. So those sugary drinks are particularly damaging to the teeth. One of the best things to eat is an apple. Your teeth and your mouth need crunchy things. So with a refined diet today, there's hardly any crunch, have you noticed? <laughs> but apples require you to crunch. And when you crunch, that is strengthening the teeth, it is strengthening the jaws, it is strengthening the gums. No wonder the old saying says, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So get used to crunchy things. Every day we should have salad. So at lunchtime we always have a salad. Celery is particularly good and, and carrots at, at crunching it in the mouth. Children love raw carrots. Cucumbers, all of those crunchy foods. They're strengthening the gums, strengthening the teeth and they are also strengthening the jaws. This explains why breastfeeding is so important for children because when, well for babies, because when babies breastfeed it takes a lot of work to get the milk out of the breast but that hard work that the baby does, it strengthens the jaw, it, for, it causes the roof of the mouth to form properly with that tongue pressing against it and it gets the, that jaw ready for the teeth to come through. So when you look after your bones, you are also looking after your teeth. I've got several crown teeth in my mouth now, getting lots of arthritis. Would I be better taking these teeth out and having false ones? Do you know the most dangerous thing you can have in your mouth is root canals? And the reason for this is a root canal filling is a dead tooth. So there's your jaw, there's the tooth, and it's connected by a peri periodontal ligament. I'll give it another colour. So that's the periodontal ligament that's connecting it. Now when someone's got a root canal filling, the root has been taken out. So there is now no blood, no lymph going through that tooth to clean it. And the inside of a tooth is like honeycomb. So you just picture this dead tooth in your mouth, no blood, no lymph, microbes can live in there. Not only this, the body tries to reject something dead so an infection can be set up here and sometimes you don't know because you've got no nerves or feeling in that tooth. I've got a book at home called Root Canal Cover Up and it's by the head of the Orthodontic Association in America. He's written a book, <laughs> well he's not the head anymore, of how dangerous root canals are. So that, what you've got here, that's the jawbone. You've got, you've got blood, let's say that's blood, 
and you've got your lymphatic system also going through there. So if that gets rotten, it can affect your lymphatic system, it can affect your blood system, and it can make a person very sick, just a root canal filling. So I say to people, if you've got a root canal filling that it is all tender, at all tender, if it has any discoloration, my advice is try and get it out this week. If you have root canal fillings that don't appear to be a problem, I would still get them out because they are a piece of dead teeth. Tooth. And if your dentist says, this is ridiculous, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that tooth, I'm not going to do it. I would say, well, if you don't do it, I'll go to someone that will. It's your mouth. <laughs> it's your tooth. <laughs> but you put root canal fillings into the web and you'll get a whole lot of scary stories coming out of there. So the root canal fillings are dangerous for many reasons. Another one is that every tooth has a link for different parts of the body. So a person can have a, you know, kidneys not working well because the tooth that has the connection to the kidney part has a root canal in it. Now the other danger in the mouth is mercury fillings. Mercury is a neurotoxin. There is no safe dose of that. In some countries, mercury fillings are totally banned. And they were banned in America for 300 years till the 1920s. Three, three uh, dentists came over from Europe and started their own dental association where they legalised mercury. They don't even look nice, do they? The mercury fillings are the silver coloured fillings. Now mercury little by little leaches into the body and it's a neurotoxin. So some people can be sick, especially if someone says, but I'm doing everything right. And then I ask, any mould exposure? No. Chemical exposure? No. Have you got any root canal fillings? Ah, yes. <laughs> Have you got any mercury in your mouth? Ah, yes. And mercury is the number one cause of multiple sclerosis because it eats away that myelin sheath. Now crowns, I, I am not sure on a crown, it would depend what was under the crown, if there was mercury under the crown, if there was a root canaling un canal under the crown. So basically I think for the person asking this question it would be good maybe for them to have an x-ray of the tooth to just see exactly what's happening under there. But if there's if it's a dead tooth, if it's root canal underneath or mercury, then it would certainly be better to, <laughs> to have it out. Okay, for tooth grinding and jaw clenching, it's probably a good idea for the person to visit an osteopath. Osteopaths are very good at manipulating jaw. There might be a bit of an uh, out of alignment there. Um, they may need to get a mouth guard while they sleep to just protect their teeth.